us. My name is Rachel and today I'll be interviewing Dr. Jeffrey Buley. Dr. Buley holds a PhD in animal science and has worked for over 15 years in the dairy industry. His expertise is in cow health management, evaluation of wearable, parlor-based and image-based monitoring technologies, and cow-focused facility design. He currently works for Alltech as a dairy housing and analytics specialist. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for thanks for coming on. Uh, all right. So to start, your background is in the dairy industry, which you've been a part of for years. Uh, how have you seen it change in terms of dairy farming practices and the evolution of dairy technology? The dairy industry continues to become more sophisticated and more information driven. We changed a number of management techniques. I think it's really amazing when you think about the industry, how much progress that we've made in areas like milk production, reproduction, genetics, and nutrition. The productivity gains over the last three quarters of the century are, are really a scientific marvel. And the next horizon, I think, is really in the use of data. We've actually always used data. Dairy has been way ahead in the big data movement. We've always used data to a large degree, but that trend has rapidly increased over the last decade. And I see that we will continue down that road where people will use data as a source of competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, definitely, especially with, you know, I mean, it's a good point that you mentioned with dairy using data for years, but there has been a seemingly a shift to a more increased usage of data and talking about dairy data. Uh, so you have worked with hundreds of dairies across the country, and I'm sure you've seen more dairy data than most of us will in a lifetime. Uh, from what you've seen, uh, what have been the biggest surprises or discoveries? I'm amazed sometimes at how much information is on farms that go unused. It's not uncommon for me to walk into an operation and, and just look at the herd management software and uncover opportunities for thousands and thousands of dollars within the records by identifying changes to improve the management of the operation. So that's probably the biggest thing really is that surprises me sometimes is how much of that information goes unused. And I think everybody suffers from information overload all of us do in all of our lives outside of dairy. So dairy is no different in that sense, but there's a real opportunity, I think, to glean more from existing sources of data. And I use the analogy often that we can learn a lot from what the sports world has done because sports have used analytics to change the way that every game is played, basketball, football, baseball, et cetera. And most of that really has not been done with using new technology that's been looking at old data in new ways. And I think that there's a huge opportunity for that. And then the new sources of data that we have, the technologies that we have now, just broaden that possibility even more. Yeah, for sure. And that's a that's a really great analogy too with comparing to uh, the sports industry. And, and also it's interesting to think about how old data can kind of be uh, revitalized, right, and finding some new uh, discoveries within that data and then also combining that old data with the new data like you mentioned. Um, so then in terms of artificial intelligence, what has been your experience in working with these new technologies and with speaking to farmers who are curious about implementing them on farm? Most of my experience with artificial intelligence has been more in a research setting, and I've seen how artificial intelligence can really uncover opportunities that traditional statistical methodologies cannot. Mm -hmm. In reality, if we think about what happens on a dairy farm, the dairy farmer is combining multiple sources of data in their minds all the time to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And artificial intelligence provides us with the opportunity to mimic that process through a computer. Mm -hmm. So the, the decisions are very complex. And when we look at an animal, even, 
there are so many different things that we're looking at. It's hard to simplify that with X plus Y equals Z. And reality of the world is much more complicated than X plus Y equals Z. So new ways of looking at data, artificial intelligence, neural networks, fuzzy logic, all these sort of techniques, they provide us with the opportunity to more accurately reflect the biological complexity and reality of the dairy system and the dairy cow. Right. I see lots of opportunity for that. It's not magic, it's kind of complicated and it takes time to train the system to learn, but it, it's being applied in, in many, many other industries and dairy has a, a tremendous opportunity because of the complexity of the system that we're working with them. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's good that you highlight it's not magic, right? I mean, this is, it's, you know, of course a, a complex system, but it's something that can be utilized to, you know, ultimately help, um, you know, understand cows better, right? And cows in the way that um, dairy farmers can, uh, whether improve herd management or uh, reproduction or, or what have you. So then, uh, speaking to herd managers and herd management, uh, we hear from farmers about wanting to find the problem cow or management by exception. Are we as an industry missing additional insights by taking this approach and not digging deeper into the data of efficient cows? At times we are. Management by exception definitely has its place. It works really well, for example, for heat detection, where we're identifying when an animal is ready to be bred based on a change in activity. And that doesn't mean something's wrong with that cow, it actually means something's quite right with that cow. So it's not necessarily that we're identifying a problem, but in that sort of scenario, it works very well. And if we're looking at, at low frequency events and we can use a management by exception approach to identify low frequency events, for example, diseases that occur at a very low frequency, then management by exception can also be really important or being able to use it within a process. So six sigma type approaches have been used in all manufacturing fields for decades now. Management by exception does have a very valuable place in the industry and will continue to have a very valuable place. But we need to move beyond that because management by exception tends to be reactive. And I think with new data sources and new ways of looking at data, we have potential to be more proactive and being able to identify scenarios before they occur. And that's really where the real power of data is is in preventing problems from occurring before they ever happen. So I think, for example, even if we're thinking about a cow that's becoming sick, perhaps we can use a change or management by exception to indicate that the animal is becoming sick that allows us to take a preventive strategy that prevents her from ever becoming sick rather than waiting until she's become sick and treating her afterwards. Right. And then I also I think that there's a lot of potential to extend that data beyond the cow level to looking at it at the group level or the herd level, for example, and using information about groups of animals to change how we manage future groups of animals. Mm -hmm. So yes, I see that management by exception has a very viable place, but we will move beyond that. And, and these new techniques will allow us to do that. Right, right, yeah, and it's, it's a very good point to bring up that, that proactive, right, the preventative approach to using data um, and also seeing not only how does that data directly correlate with that individual cow, but how does it impact the entire herd, right? Whether, you know, spotting trends or, or you know, just trying to, like I, you know, like you mentioned, being proactive. Um, and so speaking to data it feels like there's more data being generated on the farm uh, more than ever before with many different sources of data they can often sometimes be siloed uh, how is this a challenge to the dairy farmer and what is the solution it's a huge challenge for the dairy farmer because we have multiple sources of information and that information 
as you said, sits in silence often and doesn't communicate well with each other. Um, we have a long way to go in that area. We need to have better ways of integrating data. Years ago, I thought that this was a technical issue and I thought it could be solved very easily because it's not that difficult to merge two sources of data together by Cal ID, for example. Mm -hmm. As I've worked with more technology companies over the years, I realized that it's not a technical issue at all. It's more of a business or proprietary issue. It takes time, takes programming time for each interface to be set up. So it's resource allocation. Even if you are a company that says, we want to take data in from everybody, it still takes resources to dedicate the programming to be able to do that. In addition to that, maybe not everybody wants to play together data-wise. And that is just simply because of competing interest. And uh, maybe there's a particular valid reason, business reason not to allow your data to go to one source or another. Where I see this headed is that we are going to have better solutions in the future. There are dozens of companies that are really working very hard and very creatively in developing solutions and platforms to merge data together. Many of these companies have brought in people from other industries where they've already accomplished that. So they're not starting from scratch. I see that as very exciting. But I think we'll never get to the point where we have just one single platform that works all around the world for all dairy data. That's a utopia that's not going to occur. It would really be nice in some ways, but in other ways, I think it's a bit unrealistic. I think we'll see strategic alliances form and there'll be multiple solutions, good solutions out there for our industry. And I think it's very similar to what we've seen happen in the cell phone industry, where most of our cell phones are either iPhone or Android. And uh, there are even some others beyond that, but the reality is you have to choose. Am I Android or am I iPhone? And when you choose one, you by nature lock yourself out of a few features of the other one. And there are good features of both of them. And by doing that, those two keep getting better and better. And I think whether it's two or three or a dozen, you'll see the same thing happen in the dairy industry. There'll be multiple platforms and you'll choose. Are you the dairy version of Apple or the dairy version of Android? And there'll be much better solutions for it moving forward. Right. Yeah, and then, you know, it's funny, the, the cell phone comparison, I, w I do wonder if then we'll find some farmers, you know, really standing behind that platform, right? I see a lot in the cell phone industry. Um, people are kind of die hard one or the other, you know, and uh, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a good comparison to make, you know, especially when you're talking about these data platforms um, and, and them growing and kind of taking over a little bit. Uh, so then for our last question today, we've seen and discussed a variety of dairy technology. Uh, many of these technologies that have emerged in the past decade monitor uh, many different things such as, you know, milk variables, animal behavior, and physiology. Uh, which of these technologies or aspects of them excites you the most and why? Moving forward, I see the biggest opportunities for milk-based and image-based technologies. And part of that is because with those technologies, we're able to take a fixed cost and spread it over more animals, as opposed to having a variable cost that's attached to every animal in the herd. But also, many of our wearable technologies, which has been the predominant technology form in the last decade, they are measuring something behavioral. So they're looking at an indirect indicator of what's going on with the animal. A change in behavior indicates that animal is becoming sick or that animal is coming into heat. But in reality, it's a very indirect indicator. When we start looking at variables within the milk, then we are able to look more biologically or physiologically with what's actually going on with the animal. So we're no longer 
looking at an indirect indicator. So let's take something like DHBA. DHBA is an indicator of ketosis. So we're looking at really what we would be measuring in the lab to identify ketosis, much more specific than a drop in rumination time or a drop in eating time, or somatic cell count to indicate that there's an utter infection, or a pregnancy-associated glycoprotein to indicate that the animal is pregnant. These allow us to be more specific, and I think it's really exciting because it's very easy for those of us that work in the industry to think of, of a dozen or two dozen examples of biomarkers we could look at, but I think there are dozens of biomarkers that we don't even know what they are yet, that we would be able to uncover with these kinds of technologies. Right, right. Yeah, and uh, and hopefully, you know, uncovering some very interesting and insightful pieces of data, right? Uh, so then, wonderful. That concludes our interview today. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jeffrey Feely, for taking the time to discuss these advanced technologies, uh, and data, and artificial intelligence within the dairy industry. It was wonderful to have this discussion and uh, the opportunity to talk. Thanks for having me. And, uh, and thank you all for those tuning in today. Uh, to learn more about Summit of Tech, check out our website at www.summitoftech.com. Until then, see you next time.